personalities. So I'm with Internetic. We are a tech support company in uh, IT. I usually go to a lot of these because business to business, I like to know what's going on around me. Mm -hmm. So I can help. Perfect. Okay. And also, awesome. also just so you all know, he was the guest speaker yesterday on the e-commerce and social media affinity group calls, yeah. which those are on the website. And he shared some wonderful mm -hmm. information. Um, in fact, I was glad I got to hear it twice because I think I understood it more the second time than I did the first time. And um, he, he just covered a lot of things, especially when it came to Facebook. Um, the, the, he got into the parts of Facebook that nobody ever talks about. So um, you all might want to go back and watch that part. Cool. Okay. Well, um, for housing and hospitality, you know, my specialty is housing, if you will. Um, so, um, but it has been historically, this group has had a lot of um, catering folks or restaurant folks and hospitality kind of lends that way as well. So, for today, uh, and this may not be very relevant to you guys, so I may just breeze through this content and then kind of um, what I really want to hear from you all before we end is what topics or guest speakers would be of interest for you in future affinity groups for the housing and hospitality. I'm happy to continue being the content provider, but I also think there's probably other things that you all are interested in and other experts that can present, and so I'd love to open that door as well. Um, but in preparation for today's meeting, I reviewed three different um, articles in some recent publications that were very relevant to housing and hospitality and um, coronavirus and how all that's transpiring. So uh, I'll be happy to share these actual documents with you guys if you're interested. But there were some really interesting topics in there for me. And these may, a lot of them, again, are towards that um, catering or restaurant and um, hotel industry, but these may trickle down to other things that are of importance in your all's industry as well. So I'm just going to kind of highlight the hot points and then you all, we can kind of jump off of conversations. Um, so some of the really interesting things I read in these articles. So one article was called A Recipe for Survival, and that was talking about experienced restaurant um, folks discuss the challenges during the management during the midst of a pandemic. Um, that one just really shared um, some really cool things that Jeff Ruby's restaurant and a couple other really well-known restaurants are doing to support their staff during this. Another one was called um, the top HR challenges in the hospitality industry right now. Um, and then the other was titled hospitality industry challenges and opportunities in 2021. So I read through all of these, kind of the hot points I found. One really th interesting thing to me was that, um, and this, uh, again, probably goes across the board, except Nancy, you don't have employees. John, do you have employees or are you a one-man show? We got employees, yeah. Okay. So it was saying that in the hospitality world right now, and it probably goes to all industries, is people are evaluating their diversity in the workplace. So because of all of these Black Lives Matters protests and um, just the equality focus through all of that, it's saying it has brought um, to the forefront that a lot of um, companies don't have a very diverse staff and or if they have a diverse staff, the diversity is often in the um, you know, floor staff, if you will, or the line staff, if you will, and not so much in the management roles and the higher up roles. And so... Um, it has struck this conversation in the housing and hospitality world of how do we um, diversify the workplace and how do we diversify the management roles within the workplace. So I thought that was kind of interesting because it's not really COVID, but it was what 2020 brought to the forefront. Um, another one talked about how to downsize your staff and then keep loyalty within your staff. So I'll kind of hit a few points from that. Um, one of the biggest things that I took from that was that they're saying that transparency is key. So if you have staff and you're planning to furlough them or lay them off, they were saying to do that in a fair manner, to communicate the manner and how you're determining who you're furloughing. The suggestion, of course, was to um, furlough um, based on um, people's tenure with the company. So obviously you keep the people that have been with the company longer and you kind of get rid of or furlough the newer um, members. 
um, and then to over communicate with your staff through all of this and not just about staffing needs, but about anything and everything that you are changing with your business or your industry so that your staff doesn't hear it from someone else so that rumors aren't starting. I mean, it's, it's business 101, right? Communication is key and over communicative possible and necessary. So um, that was just kind of interesting to me. They just kept saying transparency is key because what's happening is that if you furlough or lay off some people and you're not being transparent with your staff, your other staff may be looking to go elsewhere because they're afraid they're on the chopping block. So that's why they were saying that transparency piece is, piece is key. Um, so in the article about top HR challenges, what they said the top four HR challenges are right now is number one, making hard decisions. So, um, you know, who are you furloughing? How are you furloughing? How are you gonna make ends meet? How are you gonna pay the bills? What creative solutions can you come up with to maintain your business? Number two was how to retain prized employees. And I'm going to elaborate on that in just a second. The third was moving to remote. So, you know, again, prior to 2020, everybody was going to an office. And now it's like throughout the year of 2020, companies have realized that remote can save money. A lot of businesses can still run 100% remotely. And so a lot of these companies are reevaluating their overhead cost. And do we just put people at remote? positions and higher remote moving forward. Um, side piece to that is then you have to be able to supply them the appropriate technology and all of the components that would allow them to have that work from home job successfully. So then you have to consider the cost to your business. How would um, that you know affect your overhead costs, et cetera? So that was kind of interesting. And then the fourth is these flood of new ideas. So you know 2020, if nothing else did challenge business owners and and just general employees entrepreneurs to figure out creative solutions and how do we integrate zoom and is this a good idea or a bad idea and do we do it by trial and error so you know all these people all these companies and industries have thrown out new ideas to get creative and now we're in a place of is it um is it something we can maintain? Is it really useful? Has it been helpful? And figuring out which of these creative ideas have merit to be continued through the pandemic and beyond. Um, sidestepping there this morning on the Middletown Chamber board meeting, one of the things that one of the members um, mentioned was that, you know, people are getting used to technology and used to Zoom meetings and people are getting used to working in their PJs and, you know, having lunch at home. And so even when the world gets back to normal, whatever that is, and COVID is, you know, not as top of mind, they're thinking that people are going to be hybrids. Um, people are going to be choosing to stay home more or looking for stay at home jobs and are going to be expecting those Zoom meetings. This guy in particular works at a church. He's like, you know, our church goers are going to expect us to be live streaming church so that those that want to come in person can, but those that have gotten used to not coming in person and or are still fearful of these things can choose to stay at home and do it that way. So there again is another component of how do we do a hybrid smartly, um, smartly, that's not a word, <laughs> you know, in a, in a smart manner, in an efficient manner, all of that to make sure that um, we aren't overusing our resources and things of that nature. Um, three more thoughts and then I'm probably gonna stop and let you guys chime in. Um, the hospitality world, and um, what they're saying their top focus is, is that customer satisfaction is the primary concern. So it's like right now, everybody's trying to figure out how do I keep my customers? How do I make my customers happy? And so that I can keep my business going, right? And so two suggestions from that, one is to personalize the client experience. So the feedback was in restaurants, in hotels, when you have clients that come, how can you make their hotel stay uh, more individualized to their specific needs and wants um, to make them maybe become a repeat client and um, to make them choose you over and over and things of that nature. And then loyalty programs, again, um, it's kind of like for some of these companies, we're having to start from scratch with our um, customer base and how do we gain customers and make them loyal to our brand or our service or our product. Um, so those were kind of the high points of all of these three articles. Um, 
you know, it talks about how much money, which I don't have to quote that to you guys. Um, the restaurant industry has lost how much unemployment rates are for the hotel hospitality and, um, uh, food industry are, um, how many of these people are out of work, um, who can't return to work for various reasons. Um, but one of these also gave tips for if you are needing to downsize your staff during the pandemic, um, their tips were to be transparent about the needs for your layoffs or furloughs. So, you know, not just saying we're furloughing you, but here's why we're furloughing you and here's what we expect. And to that point was um, some companies are choosing to do layoffs as opposed to furloughs because a furlough kind of implies that you have this role to return to and there's so much uncertainty that do you really want to give your employees that false sense of hope that they're going to come back if maybe they're not so some companies are choosing to use the term in the uh, process of layoffs versus furloughs it was saying if you do need to make cuts do it quickly without stringing people along so again if you know you're gonna have to cut people in a week or two why wait that long why not go ahead and start talking about it and figuring out so that they can come up with a game plan because they have bills to pay as well um, offer severance to laid off workers if possible and continued health benefits. So one company started actually, um, he furloughed his employees. This was a restaurant owner. He furloughed his employees. And some of the perks that he was trying to offer during this furlough was he made sure that they had access to telemedicine. He felt like having healthcare opportunities during the pandemic and knowing that your health was a priority was kind of an important piece for his uh, employees. He also, also, this business owner also created meal care packages twice a month for his employees. And so he used his resources to come up with care packages for his employees. And then he offered other virtual opportunities for personal growth, like fitness classes, finance classes, and things of that nature. So he was utilizing other resources that don't cost him anything to try and, you know, secure his staff and make them feel valued during that. Um, these other downsizing tips were to take employees' voices into account and get their reactions on new policies. And then, of course, what I think our country is kind of lacking as a whole is to offer empathy and human caring. You know, the business owner is obviously stressed. They're, they're trying to make ends meet. But then what about their 12, 10, 15, 36 employees that are also trying to make ends meet? You know, so how can we continue to be compassionate and, and be caring and empathetic to people, even though we ourselves may be suffering as well. So all that being said, do you all have thoughts or is there conversation pieces there that you guys want to expand upon or experiences that you've had? One of the things, Allison, um, on the customer service, do you think that that's appropriate for any business, not just housing and hospitality? I mean, I do. So okay. I'm in senior living, which is housing, but as you all know, there's a senior living on every corner. And so right now to sell my services, I'm having to show what sets me apart from a competitor even more so than ever before. Right. You know? And so I do think every business is, I mean, here again, we have choices to make who we want to do business with, right? And so if your business that you're doing business with goes above and beyond to make it personalized to you, you're probably going to choose them over the next one next time, right? Right. right. So I'm thinking that might be a good topic, uh, training topic. Um, well, really for all the groups or maybe even just a chamber luncheon. Um, uh, you know, I don't think it ever hurts to kind of refresh yourself on customer service. I think you have a tendency to do the same things over and over, you know, and, and sometimes you forget that that personal touch. Um, I'm going to do a little research on that. I also wanted to tell you that I have talked to Jeff about doing some training on QR codes. If oh, he cannot yeah. do it, John, is that something you all are? Yeah. Uh okay. Yeah, QR codes, if I'm thinking the right way, they're not too complicated. It shouldn't be too bad. Right. Well, you know, we talked about this a couple of months ago that QR codes are kind of making a resurgence, especially yeah. in the restaurant industry where people yeah, like can't. Dairy Queen has got them and stuff. Right. So is that something you might like to do next month for this group? Um, yeah. Just to maybe train on 
because I'm going to tell you, probably most people don't even know how to go about getting a QR code and then the, the steps to getting it up on your Facebook page, website, wherever you need to do it. So would you be able to do something like that? Yeah, it'd be no problem. Okay, so there you go, Allison. There's your topic for next month. Yeah, we touched on that, Perfect. like I say, a couple months ago. I think I missed the first part of that meeting mm -hmm. um, or maybe got the follow-up because my question was, I understand it in if you have a product to sell like Dairy Queen or whomever, but how, yeah. how is that applied to like uh, like my business? And, and Allison gave me some tips on that. Um, I haven't implemented it yet, but, um, but that was my thing is like, what would I do with a QR code? Um, but um, um, so that's a good refresher for, you know, all, all industries, not just yeah. um, someone that has a, you know, a, a, a menu or a part to sell. Item. Yeah. Right. Right. So John, let me ask you this. Would it be, yeah. would we be able to do like a step-by-step, -step, like if you told everybody to have their computer or phone or iPad in front of them? how to how to actually get one downloaded and then what you do with it from there or is it just uh, for most of it um for facebook that's not not hard like the, actually generating qr codes is pretty easy uh like i is like i we actually um let's see so we got i'm not sure if it'll show up very well it's so like on my mm -hmm. little id i got a little qr code here that actually goes to uh my website it shows my face so like if i go to a place i can show them it and they can say it goes there to verify that i am who i say i am because so i'm not just like trying to steal your stuff um uh, actually i generate these i go on on google and you can do like i google a qr code generator and there's a bunch of other resources for it they're actually pretty easy to get a hold of yeah but i, I, I know um, most places. people have good intentions but they don't get it done <laughs> so I'm thinking, could we actually say, yeah. you know, have your phone and we're going to walk you through step by step on how to get a QR code downloaded for your business. Can we do that? Yeah, that's a problem. Okay. All right. Because I know one time when you all don't probably know about this, but, you know, we had another group besides the chamber. It's called the mob, Middletown Operated Businesses. And we had so many folks that just didn't even know. I mean, literally, they didn't know anything about Facebook. Mm -hmm. And we had a class one night and taught them how to download the app on their phone yep. and then how to go in and set it, set their business up. And, and that took two hours just to do those two things. Literally. Okay. Um, but it was so helpful. And I was in that group. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Like, oh. I know, but I mean, that was so helpful. And especially for people who are technology inept, and I'm one of them, you know that. You, I, I mean, from where I am now, from where I was five years ago when I started with the chamber, I've learned a lot, but I'm just not a, I'm not a techie. And so, um, and I know that there are other people like me out there. So, yeah, that's my job security. <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, and I'm thinking not only would it be good training, but also good exposure for your business and good exposure for this, for this affiliate group at the same yeah. time. Yeah, uh, we actually, I do a recorded video sometimes. I was, we put them on our website and stuff, but there's something that has enough demand. We'll record, like I'm actually setting up a, a recording studio right now to studio. It's a bunch of cameras and lights, but we're going to do a, uh, a piece on how com not how computers work, but like we're going to take apart a computer so you can know the components. Like this is the processor, this is the RAM, this is your power source. Because we're trying to demystify the computer. Everyone's like, this black box is scary. I don't know how it works. So we're going to take it. It's like, this is these are your parts. This is how it works mm -hmm. at a high level. But we, we it doesn't matter. We, we upload videos like that fairly consistently. Okay. Yeah. All right. So there you go, Allison. I'll get that up and running on the perfect on the schedule. I thought on customer service, I think is um, I would call a force multiplier, but in, in any industry, like my own and hospitality and in retail and everything, it's it really what sets people apart. And you look at um, example, actually, good example, uh, airlines. That's uh, why people like myself when I have to fly, I will fly Delta over everything else, even though Delta costs more because their customer service it makes you not be like cattle. So 
you know, it even like especially in COVID times where everyone is stressed out and anxious, uh, you know, like keep your head on and, and handle the like people losing their minds about masks and everything. To be able to handle that customer service as it comes at you, I mean, as a whatever business sets you apart. Mm-hmm. Well, and I also think, too, that um, during COVID, because so many people are working from home, I've been trying to reach out. I've kind of set a goal to reach out to five current members a day, um, five prospective members a day, five uh, renewing members a day, which that's always very easy to do. Um, And then just five random, you know, whether it's about a schedule for an affinity group or a speaker for this or, you know, different things like that. And do I get to talk to 20 actual people? Not always, but I'd say I probably get to talk to a good eight to 10 per day. And most calls will only last less than five minutes each, but it's, it's a very productive time. And I think it lets our Cust our members know that we're there, we're here, we're still working, we're open for business, and um, we're here if they need us. So, and I think they just appreciate that quick little phone call. Yeah. I've always been about picking up the phone rather than um, falling back on texts or emails. And one thing I love, Nancy, that you started doing last year was your little tidbit for the month um i don't know if that's what you call it but that's what i call it you know um and but it's interesting what you send out and it it makes me think of you when i see other things like that coming from other places i immediately think of nancy grease well one thing that what else what you were your your list of things you were going through the two things i actually wrote down um, were to, you know, customer satisfaction is still key. Um, and, you know, to, to personalize that and to gain and keep customer loyalty. So, you know, those were the, the takeaways I got from a lot of what you had. And, and that's always been the gold standard. And I think you're right, especially in this day and age with, you know, so much being via technology as opposed to the face-to-face, the handshake, that type of thing. Um, you know, how do we keep ourselves front of mind to our sphere um, and to new people? Um, and yeah, to personalize it. And then, Laura, like you said, calling somebody or like what I try to do on my little, you know, emails I send out ever so often um, is to send something. Yes, you want to obviously get your email opened up. Uh, I try not to over email because I don't want it to be an annoyance and people just, you know, start blocking me because I spend too much time of that on my own. So I know, you know, I don't want to be that person and everybody knows a real estate agent, you know, we're all a little different and, you know, whatever, but you want to send something of value whenever you contact someone, but you know, that doesn't necessarily have to be selling what you're selling. It's just something of value um, to say, Hey, you know, this is kind of what's going on, or this is what a thought was, or this is a topic for whatever. So yeah, I try to do it a little different. So I'm not like, Oh, look what I sold or look what I listed. Um, It's like, Hey, here, I'm here. I'm in the community. I'm a regular person. um, But here are some some different things and just try to like I say something of value but not necessarily so stiff that it kind of throws you in that box with all the other realtors um, that you just kind of gloss over and go yeah 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 so I think that is key to personalize and stay in touch um, one of the things Allison you spoke about too in reference to the house or downsizing and furloughing and that type of thing our office right before COVID hit, our lease was up on our previous building. And uh, so we had already decided we were going to move for a variety of reasons. Um, But one of them was we were downsizing um, and we were changing our floor plan um, the way that our office was set up. And, And we had, Allison, like you mentioned, our broker said to us, 
here's why here here's the reasons why you know we're not going to stay here's the reasons why we're going to change some things in the office here's the way we're going to change why we're going to change some things and she gave us a printout of her um outgoing expenses to run just to keep that building open mm -hmm. and and you know she said okay here's you know this isn't your problem but if you know here's what i have to pay every month um and if i don't if you all don't generate this much money to come in then you know i you know i, I you were in the hole so um you know here here's your incentive to get out there and and do mm -hmm. your job and another reason why hey we are going to downsize and this is the reason why mm -hmm. of course we're all independent contractors we're not employees so um you know there's no um we didn't have any issues um you know we're all our own but um I do know that a lot of companies did the furlough versus the the layoffs because first of all nobody knew how long this was going to last and who how, how things were going to shake out and like Allison said if you it was my understanding that if you furloughed they were still your employee so you could keep them on your health insurance you didn't have to rehire them after you didn't have to go through that process especially if you're like a corporation and you've got all those guidelines yeah. so it was easier get them back to work kind of thing um, but I like the app, uh, you know, what you said about some employers um, still trying to do all these extra things to, to keep their, you know, their, their <clears throat> current employees or furloughed employees or hopefully rehires, um, you know, get through all of this. Uh, now, our industry wasn't hit that bad. As a matter of fact, it, some of it kind of boomed. Um, so, and we were always in a uh, um, <coughs> essential business. Um, but we did have to modify the way we work. So, um, you know, most of us are used to working remotely, but the one thing that I think, and I think all companies are gonna pick and choose what's gonna work best for their, their industry, for their company, their employees. And it's, I think it's gonna be a hybrid in everybody. So you have the option to work two days in the office and three days home or half a day or whatever. Um, I think there's going to be a variety of that, but I do think that people in general want to get back together and have in office, sit around the table, meetings and conferences instead of the, the generic, you know, I call it the Brady Bunch, um, you know, look at each other on the screen. I think we just miss a lot of that connection. And I think that Especially if you're collaborating on something, which John, you probably have a lot more. Well, I don't know if we all kind of do. You have those times you need to collaborate on a project. That's hard to do if you're having to take turns talking and you can't be doing what we normally do as people. Yeah, you can't just do it on the whiteboard. If, yeah. So you know, um, I mean, everybody has dual monitors now, but it still just doesn't doesn't do it. Uh, yeah. But I do see a resurgence in that coming back, even if it's you know, we're all in the office one day, you know, um, mm -hmm. but uh, that, that's how they see things changing and um, or staying the same the way it is now. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know, to the transparency with the staff, you know, um, I do think it goes two ways because I just know from my observations that people are always like, well, he's the boss. He obviously has money. He's fine. Da, da, da. And it's like, well, the boss still has bills to pay too, not just in their personal life, but related to this business. And so, yeah. you know, again, right now it's like, everybody's just trying to figure out how do I survive? How do I make ends meet? And so I think some people aren't stopping to think about other people, how they're dealing with it, how, whatever, you know? And I mean, and in all honesty, you know, sometimes the business owners have the most to lose mm -hmm. in the game at that point. So, you know, I do think that that transparency of the why. Now in my company, they're all, they've always been about the why, uh, which is one thing I appreciate about them. But I think that in this technology era, in this era of people are sitting at home, they can Google whatever. I mean, there's definitely a bigger need in my personal opinion to be more transparent with your staff and, and explain the why so that they can, you know, understand the big picture. Mm -hmm. As far as topics for future, I'll have to think about that. Nothing just is really jumping out at me right now. Um, yeah, I'd love to know if this is kind of a um, 
a tricky little affinity group because housing and hospitality, it's like, um, and it's open to anybody. You don't have to be in that industry, you know, but um, they have common themes, um, housing, hospitality, but then you throw other people in like you are technically under housing, Nancy, but you kind of a little different model than, you know, somebody who's in the hotel industry or something like right. that. So I really would love for you to think about what's of interest to you and let me know any topics um, or if you have guest speakers that you want to talk about, you know, and it doesn't always have to be pandemic related. I feel like every call we've had so far has focused on why, you know, the differences with the yeah. pandemic, but it's also top of mind right now and it's unfortunately the reality we're facing is you can't really get back to business if you don't acknowledge that there's a pandemic and what's going on with the pandemic right so yeah yeah so unfortunately i feel like we're gonna be talking about this pandemic for the next six or eight or nine or ten or twelve or fifteen or twenty four months yes it is it is here to stay for a while yeah yeah you know now that we're in 2021 i'm like yeah it's not, nothing's gonna change much as much this year as we were all yeah. hoping everybody kept thinking Changes you know slow. Yes. I mean, I'm thinking if anything, it's going to be, we're going to be in masks all year is what I think. You know, I don't think too much is going to change until 2022, prayerfully. <laughs> I mean, you know, this is my get up. I have a face shield and a mask every day <laughs> when I'm at work and um, yeah, it's, everybody's over it, but unfortunately the pandemic's not over. No. So we got to do what we got to yeah. do. You're right. When everybody said, oh, the pandemic will ex will disappear as soon as the election's over, you know, that it's just all made up. Well, it was and, first, you know, when summer hit. Yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. It's like yeah. When, when summer hits. Oh, wait, when winter hits. Oh, wait, when the election's over. Oh, when 2021. Like, it's not just magically going to disappear in dust, you know, like. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> so, and as then, you know. As far as I'm concerned, it's here until it's not here. And I'm not sure that will ever happen. Mm -hmm. We, again, in the senior living world, you know, we have been started vaccinations um, in all of our campuses and a lot of these families are like, okay, so I'm vaccinated now. Can I come in and visit? Can I come in and visit? And it's like, you know, no, it's not the, I mean, it is hopefully going to help, but until everyone gets that, it's not mandatory here. So I can't let somebody who's vaccinated come in and you can still be a carrier and potentially, you know, spread it. And so it's just, yeah, we're just going to have to kind of chill and wait and watch it happen and as i keep telling everybody keep your pantyhose on yeah <laughs> <laughs> well i'm i'm uh was kind of hoping we'd have somebody more in the hospitality um realm on today because i was just curious to see um i know the the fast the the restaurants seem to be doing better because of you know doordash and all that you know deliveries oh, yeah. and who knows if they can eat in or out or whatever, but the, at least it hasn't been so cold that, um, you know, they've still been, I've still seen these people sitting outside eating with their coats on. So, you know, they've been able to survive some on that. Um, but I was curious on the people more in the hotel and the other, the other um, experience type um, um, industries to see how they're faring. Um, because so many people didn't vacation, so people aren't taking the weekends and doing anything um, or going anywhere. And my husband's like, well, we're not planning on anything. I'm like, ah, come on. Let's do something. Well, in this article, well, statistically just... speaking, it says um, the rest, so this was written on December 1st of 2020. So this is about a month, a little over a month old. It said the restaurant industry in 2020 is on track to lose $240 billion. Um, in September, roughly 3 million restaurant employees were out of work and one sixth of all restaurants were closed permanently or for the long term, according to the National Restaurant Association. Hotel workers experienced a devastating 38% unemployment rate earlier this year and new, nearly two thirds of U.S. hotels and occupancy rates of 50% had occupancy rates of 50% or less less late last summer, not enough to pay the bills. Uh -huh. So, you know, and some of the other things I saw is that the hotel industry in particular is really having to um, uh, go up against these Airbnbs and all this other right. stuff. So, you know, talk about a personalized experience. You can go to this Airbnb and not be bothered. And, you know, you can see all their cleanliness and you're not going to walk down the halls of other people and all of that. So, you know, that... 
I mean, I'll be shocked if we don't start seeing a lot of hotels just start closing. Um, but we'll see. Um, At least temporarily. And I just like right. Dogma just shut the doors until things settle down. Well, that's right. not, and that's not just that's just not um, vacation travel um, because because the business industry <laughs> is they're all working remotely. My husband used to travel all the time. Um, he was like, I, I get to sleep in my own bed tonight. And, um, you know, now it's, yeah, he's, he's never going. So, I mean, half of airlines and half of hotels, or at least half, were the business industry. And that kind of screeching halt. So um, that alone, I think, was, not tra you know, families not traveling no. uh, or being spontaneous, even just to say, hey, let's go somewhere for the weekend. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's un, un, unfortunate, um, but um, and we do have of... we do have um, ZMB Properties, uh, Nadine Brewer, that and they're a, a a bed and breakfast. And she was talking. I think she was on the call maybe two or three months ago, and she was talking about all the different things that they're doing to try to, you know, sanitize and and mm -hmm. keep everything COVID safe. But. Um, I don't know, restaurant, I mean, I'm going to say hotels. I know their capacities are way, way down. It's affected tourism. Right. Uh, you well, know, I, I can't I imagine say, you know, the dollars lost in, in Louisville just from not having a derby. Well, and think about not just for people staying overnight, but I mean, hotels make a lot of money hosting events and utilizing their catering and all of those components. So nobody's having events. You know, I mean, so that's an even bigger. I know uh, there's a handful of people that I know, a couple of handful of people I know that didn't even get married or has postponed it or had a little backyard do. And most of those people were going to have a blowout, you know, people from out. And a lot of them were had relatives and best friends, you know, out of state. So they were going to be booking, you know, blocks and hotel rooms. Um, so not just, you know, just even weddings are a big a big deal mm -hmm. um, for a lot of people too so that all is gone yeah because um, some of them yeah. just they kept getting pushed out and pushed out they're like fine we're not even going to push it to next year we're going to get married now and then next year we'll have a barbecue and you know and do, go cheap because um, some of them are trying to get that wedding money to put down as a down payment on a house exactly so uh have the have have the wedding party in your backyard next year. That's, my, that's right. Show off your house. That's right. <laughs> so, um, well, hey, I'm gonna have to jump off. So, um, it was good seeing you guys. Of course, I've seen both of you all already today or this, you know, yesterday. But uh, uh, yeah, I'll I'll think of some topics, Allison, and get them to you. Yeah, send me some topics. And um, John, I appreciate you covering QR codes next month. And then, you know. Um, as we get more participation, I mean, this group can go in a lot of ways and we really just kind of want to offer it as a chamber, you know, opportunity for people to connect. So if you all have other suggestions about the format or anything, we're totally open to your feedback. Yeah. Sounds good. Okay. All right. Well, John, do you have anything else? Bye, Nancy. Hey, John, how many, right how, many, yeah. how many people do you have on in your company? Five. And you're just, you're local here? Yeah. Oh, so you're over in town, on town park or whatever because yeah. Yeah. yeah we used to be right over there behind the funeral home um oh yeah 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 we, we're well, we're like we're next to uh michael tires here yeah yeah okay yeah um yeah because i was wondering my son's in uh computer science not at computer engineering so he does backside stuff okay yeah um, i don't know i think he needs to get paid more for what he does but well was not the place for it huh? <laughs> Little, unfortunately, Little actually pays no, fifteen percent lower than national average. That's okay. He's you know, he's he's okay. in that particular he's industry. Just in case in IT as a whole. Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, I'm gonna throw his name out to you anyway. Hit hit your name out to him anyway. <laughs> Casey wants to fill you out, so that's fine. It, I always take it, resumes. It's all about networking. That's right. That's right. You never know who's gonna be around the corner. Like I say, you got to have something in your back pocket. So, right. all right. Okay. Bye, guys. Thanks. Bye. Bye, you all. Bye, Bye. guys. Have a good rest Bye. of the day. You do. You too.